Hello friends, this video on crop production and management part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now the next agricultural practice that has to be followed is application of manures. Now before we talk about application of manures, we have to first understand what is a manure and why do we use manures. Well in short, manures are those substances which increases the fertility of the soil and therefore increases the productivity of the crop. Now the question is why do we use manure? Where is the need? Now manure is primarily used to improve the crop yield. When we want to increase the crop production, there comes the need of manure. It is not that without manure you will not be able to produce crops. You will be able to produce crops but if you want to enhance the crop production then manure is required. Now the question is why do we need to improve the crop yields? It's okay. Even if some you know, I mean, a decent productivity is coming out, that is also okay. But why do we want to improve the yield? That's because the population is constantly increasing. Now, as the population is increasing, the needs of the growing population is also increasing because none of the person can survive without food. So, when the population increases so drastically, their need for food also increases drastically. So, to meet the food requirements of this ever-increasing population, we also need to improve the crop yield. And how do we improve the crop yield? By following some of the techniques. And one of those techniques is application of manures. Problem is that the population is increasing but the land area remains the same. For example, if you talk about India, so the land which is present within India that is still the same. It is just the population which is increasing. So the demand is increasing but your there is no scope of increasing the area. So all we can do is we can have to follow some techniques which can increase the crop yield within the same area. So maybe the same area was giving some x tons of wheat but now the same area should give some 2x tons of wheat. So that is what we have to aim for and for that purpose manures are ter manures turned out to be extremely helpful. So now in order to meet the needs of the growing population the crop productivity has to increase. Now for crop productivity we need to provide all that a plant needs. Now plant needs primarily nutrients. So we have to manage the nutrient supply to the plants really well so that the plant is able to get all that is needed for a proper growth of the plant. So in nutrient management what we do is all that substance, now before that what basically is a nutrient? It is a substance that provides nourishment to the plant. For example, for us human beings, we eat food, right? Now, what does the food consist of? The food consists of various nutrients like proteins, vitamins, carbohydrates in appropriate amount which provides nourishment to our body. So, it provides energy to our body to undergo the various processes which taking place inside our body. So, in a very similar way, plants also need nutrients. It also needs nourishment. And what are those substances which produce nourishment, which provide nourishment to the plant? Some of the nutrients are carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, iron, manganese, boron, zinc, copper, molybdenum and chlorine. So in total plants need 16 nutrients. Now the nutrients which are needed in huge amount or in more amount they are called macronutrients which are needed in larger amounts. They are called macronutrients, whereas those which are needed in smaller amounts, they are called micronutrients. Now, macro means what? Macro, the word macro means big. So, nutrients which are needed in bigger amounts, in more amounts. Micro means small. So, those nutrients which are needed only in small amounts, they are called micronutrients. Now, some examples of micronutrients would be molybdenum or copper or zinc. So, they are needed in small amount. If you talk about macronutrients, it could be nitrogen, phosphorus. So, they are needed in huge amounts. So, they are examples of macronutrients. So, these are basically the nutrients which are needed by the plants. Now, we need to ensure that the plant gets appropriate nutrients because if it doesn't get so, then the plant will not be able to grow properly and if the plant doesn't grow properly it is quite quite
quite obvious that the productivity will not be that great. Because what do we mean by productivity? For example, if we again take the same example of a tomato plant. So what are we interested in? We are not interested in the leaves of the tomato plant. We are interested in the fruit of the tomato plant because fruit is the, is the one which we eat. So we want more number of fruits. So if the tomato plant is able to give more number of tomatoes, that is more number of fruits, then our mission is accomplished. So we get, got good crop productivity. So now the plant will be able to give more fruits only when the plant is healthy enough. The plant has sufficient energy to undergo the process of reproduction, to undergo the other processes of photosynthesis, respiration, etc. And then, then only it will be able to give better productivity. So we need to ensure that appropriate nutrients are made available to the plants. So what do we do here? How do we manage nutrient management? So why is nutrient management needed? Now deficiency of nutrients can have adverse effects on the plant. So what can happen due to deficiency of nutrients? Primarily reduced growth because for growth plants need nutrients. So it is very simple like if we do not get proper food, we will not be able to grow properly in our growing age. For example, for small kids, the, it is always advised to give them proper food, to give them good amount of milk so that they are able to grow properly. So if they are deficient in the nutrients, they will have reduced growth. So for plants also the same thing. Adverse effect on reproduction. Now, if nutrient if enough nutrient is not there, enough energy will not be there to undergo the process of reproduction. Now, in plants, if reproduction does not take place, what will happen? Fruits will not be produced, seeds will not be produced. So, this will impact the crop productivity. More prone to diseases because uh, the when when you are not eating healthy, what happens? Your body is weak, and when your body is weak, you are more prone to get infections. You are more prone to get attacked by uh, disease-causing organisms. So it's the same thing happens with plants. So when they do not get proper nutrients, their body is not healthy enough to remain strong. So very easily they get uh, infections. And also when we talk about agriculture or when we talk about cultivation of crops, what happens is one, a, a farmer has a big stretch of land where he cultivates crops. So now if he keeps growing crops one after another, so growing crops one after another make the soil poorer in some nutrients because all the nutrients get continuously used up by the crops and immediately the, the crops give some productivity, some new crops have been planted. So if continuously crops are being planted on the same field so what happens is the soil sometimes become poorer in some nutrients so some compensation need to be done that means some nutrients maybe is needed to be provided from outside so externally you can pump in some nutrients into the soil so that the soil once again becomes rich in nutrients. So something of that sort is done with the help of manure. That is, we additionally put some nutrients into the soil. So that is manure. So let us see how exactly do we do that. So how is nutrient management done? So we enrich the soil with nutrients in the form of manure and fertilizers. So these are the two things which enrich the soil with additional nutrients. Now, how are nutrients present in the soil? So there are so many natural uh, biogeochemical cycles or there are so many natural cycles taking place in that atmosphere. For example, there is nitrogen cycle, there is phosphorus cycle, sulfur cycle. So, so many cycles keep taking place in the inside the earth. Now, as a result of this, naturally also the nutrients exist within the soil. But when we feel that the amount of nutrients which exist naturally, that is not enough for the amount of crops which we have planted on that soil, then what we have to do is we have to put some additional nutrients into that soil. And how will we put that additional nutrients? We put it in the form of manure and fertilizers. So manure and fertilizers contain those nutrients which are extremely important for growth and development of plants. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.